let us understand the process how we process of machine learning or how do we enable learning for the computer uh, or the machine through an example consider a example where we want to automate the process of uh, detecting the region of fishes or the fish and we would like to classify into one of the categories say assume that i would like to uh, uh, classify uh, the fishes that are coming under the conveyor belt on the conveyor belt through the images that are taken on the top of the conveyor belt uh, what do you think are the steps that are involved to uh, put these fishes that they come on the conveyor belt to two categories assume that there are two kind of fishes which this is a classical example from the book uh, doda and hart uh, pattern classification book by doda and hart so where we want to put the fishes into uh, either sea bass or salmon uh, uh, categories so assume that the fishes are coming and we would like to first identify detect exactly the region of fish and we would like to put into one of the categories so what do you think are the steps key steps that are important to do this automated fish classification problem so this is one of the task which will help us to understand how the what kind of learning is required or what kind of pattern recognition is required before even we go into the learning aspects so see for example if you want to identify the fish and put into one of the category first thing what we should do is to exactly demarcate one fish among all the fish that are in the field of view so we that is referred to as uh, a kind of pre processing where we would like to remove the ba uh, like background details and we would like to focus on the details that are to be understood more or put into one of the categories so that is referred to as pre processing and in this case that pre processing is probably image enhancement followed by segmentation that is segmenting the region of the fish the main fish say you can see that this is the main region of the main fish that we would like to separate from other fishes once we identify and demarcate the fish uh, that i would like to put into one of the categories the next step that is needed is to extract relevant information from this image of the fish to say that this is a sea bass fish or a salmon fish so even if you consider in terms of a face recognition assume that i have a class going in that class several students are present and i would like to give a automated attendance to the students so what kind of operations do you think or what kind of steps should i take to complete this process so one step the first step is see attendance can be made easily using the faces of the persons so i would like to detect the region of person that is the first step so the detection of the region of first person from the whole background including the other friends in the back, considering in background is the first step once i detect a person face then recognizing this person with respect to the data base i have or with respect to the knowledge i already have to give that this is a particular person a is referred to as recognition so these are so to do that what we need to do is unlike in humans it is not very easy to make a computer say that this is a face and this is the region of face and also to say that this is the person a so for example to do that this is a person what we usually do is we extract some relevant information or a easy to understand information for the computer or the algorithm so such information in case of face may be eyes distance between eyes eyes to nose distance and this shape of the face color of the face and so on and in case of a fish the uh, the uh, information that we extract may be the uh, like the length of the fish under a calibrated camera uh, and the width of the fish and the number of fins uh, and the brightness or the lightness of the fish and so on so assume that solomon fish is Oh, is oh, shorter than a sea bass fish then that is a good clue to separate the classification to perform the classification between a sea bass and a solomon fish 
and if i am able to do that then i will be able to automatically categorize put these fishes into two different baskets on the conveyor belt without having a human supervision so this helps in automation through pattern recognition and in the process of doing this i need i can't easily decide based on one sample whether this sample is seabass or shalaman or based on a single face image i will not be able to tell whether this is rahul or uh, praveen or whatever so what we need is a database with which we usually compare and put in and say that this is a person a or person rahul etc so to do that we need a we will see why the learning is more important there so as i discussed just now the task of pattern recognition which is the objective or the application uh, specific term uh, is to understand the to uh, to put the data into different categories or different classes what we need to do is we need to extract relevant information from the background details and we need to separate the uh, for like the uh, object of interest or region of interest from the background so this comes this as discussed before has a three step process if we consider in terms of each step uh, doing one important task one is pre processing that is focusing on the region where i would like to take a decision and second one is the extracting relevant information where i can extract some good features that are that make sense for humans or more for machines and then using those features uh, and representation of the image or the speech or any other form of uh, data like probably even text i would like to put into one category or i would like to take a decision for example i may say that i say if i am considering autonomous driver driver application the task there is to identify whether there is a uh, there is a uh, obstacle or not so that decision how much distance it is so inferring inf um, like making some inferences out of this features i have extracted so that is the third task so this helps in automate automation and in the later discussion i will bring out very clearly why machine learning or learning is more prominent and important for now it is uh, good enough that for many of the automated tasks where um, some kind of artificial intelligence is to be embedded or to be brought in uh, or, or where some kind of recognition has to happen or decision making has to happen first pre processing and feature extraction followed by some kind of classification or any other higher level task is required so when you study when you listen to these terms uh, uh, in a superficial manner there are several terms related terms that appear in the literature starting from say for example signal processing image processing so these are considered to be uh, slightly different different areas and what i would like to do here is to give a little more intuition and clarity on uh, the uh, mm, uh, to discriminate or differentiate these terms with respect to, to the others also to identify the similarities of these with respect to, to the other areas uh, sub areas of artificial intelligence you can say so signal processing uh, image processing computer vision uh, pattern recognition machine learning and artificial intelligence so signal processing has is very classical and it has roots since 19 um, in fact 18th century and the main uh, objective of the signal processing is given a one dimensional signal like speech or a or bg data or any other time series data uh, how do we process them uh, to make some nice representation Uh, in terms of again another signal or in terms of that will enable us to make better inferences similarly this this inferences can be made even for two dimensional data that are images and three dimensional data that are videos with a set of images as different frames and also for four dimensional data where you have actually um, time information as well uh, 
uh, and in fact once we uh, keep extracting this uh, information so the dimensionality of the data is one thing and the dimensionality in which we process is also another thing so these data may also be processed in higher dimensions in for some regions so more than even three and four dimensions so these process signals will uh, the output of this usually signal processing is uh, we give a um, noisy signal or a raw signal and from there we would like to make it, get a process signal and the inference is considered to be slightly higher level task after we get the process signal and it the process signal usually enables better inferences image processing is is also with the base of signal processing uh, but uh, being images being very important category to understand the real scenarios this becomes uh, this became an important um, area where uh, great research has been focused now this mainly works on bringing better processing on images rather either in satellite images medical images or in conventional um, natural images and uh, giving the processed image as the output and making nice inferences from there the computer vision is more concentrated uh, on making inferences so for example if i give a input as an image and output is also an image like in image denoising problem where input is an image and output is an image so it is referred to as image processing problem where after denoising for example if i would like to know if there is an airplane there or if i would like to know whether there is a person there uh, or i would like to know what is the context going on such making such inferences from images uh, or from one di three dimensional data like videos is referred to as computer vision so like the humans do they won't not only look at the objects ahead of them they also make good inferences of the scene and the objects around or the mm, way movement of the objects around so that is importing the ability of the human vision to the computer is referred to as computer vision and this is also a great uh, area of interest uh, in this community here you can see the relevance of the machine learning and the pattern recognition much more because if once we need to make inferences or if we need to make inferences there should be some good recognition that should happen either with the signal or with the image or with the data and identify uh, the particular person or a particular class or a particular task etc and for the uh, uh, in fact you can see computer vision is an area where we have uh, we would like to make inferences from images and videos and pattern, pattern recognition is a uh, mm, uh, more specific word that is used to uh, point out the task that is done in computer vision and machine learning is the algorithmic approach that is used uh, usually to do pattern recognition or for computer vision so machine learning as the name indicates where we have enough data or where we have even less data how do we learn or leverage from such data to understand the situation like where the object is who is the person is etc and make use of it in new scenarios or in similar scenarios so that is learning machine learning like humans do learn from childhood uh, how does the machine learn with the examples that are provided to it so algorithmic details of bringing in pattern recognition uh, in computer vision can be referred as machine learning especially when there is learning involved from the examples and artificial intelligence uh, has now one of the main branch as machine learning in fact that is a very prominent area where uh, artificial intelligence itself is evolving however artificial intelligence also has another um, several set of methods which are rule based and other approaches so this is uh, a slide from uh, andrew ng um, lecture lectures so as you can see here uh, this gives a global picture of what pattern recognition is what recognition we should do uh, we usually need to uh, uh, 
consider in different kind of data. You can see recognition is important in images. So to identify is it a bike or a um, person riding ride, bike. To understand the voice of a person or a speech. To understand the text, what is it and um, say identify a particular sentence or a word in it, etc. And to, so in each of these tasks, as you can see, recognition is of great importance. And if you see, almost uh, many of the real tasks can be categorized into either visual or audio or text. So it is of prominent importance in many, many applications. So I will figure out here few of the, I will show here few of the applications where this machine learning has played a great role and is being uh, still important and prominently taking place um, in uh, developments. So one such application is um, uh, digit recognition and character recognition. As you can see, so here it automatically uh, recognizes the digit, uh, in, for example, pin code number and it uh, sends to the particular area. So this can be automated with the given uh, uh, recognition approaches. So this also can be useful in uh, like understanding the uh, number plates, uh, license plates uh, of the uh, either vehicles or cars etc. So the other application where it has shown a great importance is in uh, biometric recognition. So you can see here recognizing the uh, person is very uh, difficult uh, as the years goes on and the um, ex like uh, uh, outer appearances change. But the iris recognition uh, iris will help or any biometric recognition usually help in such scenarios where the uh, biometrics are known to not change over years and for a person they are unique. Similarly, there are several other applications where the computer vision or machine learning and the pattern recognition has shown great uh, uh, promising uh, developments. As you can see, if I uh, want to know where the object is, so I can we can easily do through object detection and, um, and understand what uh, we can tag to uh, particular uh, uh, even web page. So here there is another application of biometric which we usually use either in, through fingerprint or to face recognition to uh, like um, give uh, authentication to our computers or laptops um, and making attendance in class etc. And here are few examples our team has done on several of these aspects. Uh, so I will uh, list out here a few uh, to give a um, understanding of what applications can be um, uh, done through the uh, algorithms that we discuss and what ability you can uh, demonstrate in terms of the uh, uh, projects that um, uh, based on the discussion that we will have in that in this course. So one thing the student uh, here has done is to create a panoramic view that is through a bit of uh, image processing and stitching. After that, once you have a panoramic view of the uh, person, of the scene, of the lab here, they would like to detect where the face is. So face detection is in, in some sense can be posed as a object recognition problem where the face is there or not there. So it's a face detection is also a classification, can also be posed as a classification problem face or non-face region in an image followed by recognizing which is the person that the face is belongs to. So this you can see that actually similar things can also be extended to head detection uh, and uh, this can also be demonstrated on little more real scenarios where the class is going and detecting the people irrespective of their uh, location. Uh, and the resolution of their faces in the images and uh, mm, uh, like giving an automated attendance. Uh, so for each of these applications to uh, before I start the discussion on the specific topics that I will discuss in my uh, in my lecture, uh, I would like to give a uh, hint or the uh, clues uh, where you can start uh, experimenting some of the uh, ideas that we discuss in the class as well. 
So the, for each of the applications um, ranging from face recognition to object detection and uh, tracking and many other computer vision tasks that has the uh, machine learning uh, at the background and also to other applications like time series analysis or for uh, identifying trends in EEG, ECG or whatever. So we have a standard data sets in now in the uh, uh, community. So we can see that actually if I, what I have sh shown before are the face recognition data sets and uh, this is human non-human detection data sets. Now given the uh, prominent importance of learning methods compared to the non-learning methods for recognition, uh, the data sets has much more importance and they have gained interest and they have been uh, like available uh, for large community. So you can uh, get hang of a uh, um, few of the data sets for your interesting problems and whichever I discuss in my uh, class or course, you can start implementing on few of these things uh, to understand how do they work in some of the real scenarios. This is another example where you can see that we would like to separate the uh, blood cells uh, in a uh, different scenarios, the first scenario corresponds to uh, microscopic images where we would like to classify different white blood cells. This here we would like to differentiate between malaria cells and non-malaria cells and the malaria cells and non-malaria red blood cells. And here we would like to separate um, the uh, um, uh, uh, cells in imaging flow cytometry scenario where there is no stain um, and added like this. Uh, to um, highlight the colors of the nucleus and the uh, cytoplasm uh, and also where we have actually uh, the cells can flow in a sheath fluid. So and then in such scenarios uh, improving contrast as a pre-processing and segmentation also as a pre-processing and then followed by feature extraction and classification plays a great role to identify and classify the blood cell uh, compositions and then helpful diagnosis, automated diagnosis to some extent, but at least to help the doctors on the uh, anomalies or the variations when the, uh, with respect to the normal conditions. And these find applications even in satellite image processing or satellite uh, data processing, where you can see uh, mm, here we would like to uh, separate the region of road uh, from the buildings. So recognize where the pixels, each pixel, say in an image, if you consider a uh, image, what a camera looks at is a is some region before it. And each um, sensor element in the camera looks at a small region in the space and uh, average of the intensity variations or radiance variations will give as a value at that sensor location and that is referred to as pixel. That is, um, they, that will be there at each of the sensor locations of a two-dimensional uh, sensor, array sensor, uh, sensors of uh, cameras and that will help us to give an image. And hence, if you would like to separate that, if you would like to say that this region is building, this region is road and this region is building, what we see is the, uh, some average reflectances in this region that looks like a road is road we consider it as road and uh, likewise for other classes either grass or um, buildings etc so based on the intensity variations across different bands or a single band we would like to put these pixels uh, or the group of pixels into different categories that is what is usually needed in all the image classification problems now considering uh, the similar application, so one can also do for uh, mm, uh, hyperspectral images or multispectral images where uh, you can, uh, we may have several bands and based on several bands we would like to categorize into uh, buildings, water and uh, road etc. So this, has, this finds applications also in uh, uh, landslide identification where there is a uh, change in the uh, region uh, through because of landslides. Now uh, these were the uh, f appli different applications that, uh, uh, that, that also need uh, machine learning or pattern recognition. I will give a brief of different areas little later. 
but before moving on to that i would like to highlight that the there is a paradigm shift in the ms classification or even the machine learning or the um, uh, pattern recognition that shift is uh, so far what we have discussed is a three step process pre processing feature extraction and classification so that has been conventionally the uh, framework for uh, um, pattern recognition or image classification or any classification problems wherein machine learning is a key part to do that do classification uh, but now given the advancement of the um, uh, like uh, methodologies that are developed and the learning strategies that are available now the learning is not just used for classification but learning is also used for feature extraction and in fact learning is also used for pre processing so now the context of discussion or the importance of discussion on machine learning is much more prominent because previously the machine learning was only to do classification after we do image processing based uh, pre processing and feature extraction or data pro signal processing based feature extraction and um, pre processing and feature extraction or time series uh, statistics based uh, pre processing and uh, feature extraction but now the learning methods has evolved to a range where you do um, pre processing feature extraction and classification through learning strategies so now the uh, role or importance of discussion on machine learning is much more prominent however i will not be discussing on the um, such approaches in this uh, um, course uh, i will only give a broad overview of different learning strategies that are conventionally employed for machine learning and uh, set a very strong or firm background to understand the develop current developments and to come up with even better developments uh, in similar lines so to give a few of the research problems in these areas say for example if i have a um, if i learn with several examples that these are the uh, stripe um, stripes kind of texture and this is a um, checker board kind of texture now the problem is if i give any different kind of uh, sized uh, uh, squares or checkerboards and different uh, variations of the bands the algorithm will be able to say that these are all bands these are all checkerboard however if we give a rotated uh, stripes or rotated uh, checkerboards many of the methods will not be able to do as uh, like uh, um, even if we learn with thousands of examples of the um, uh like uh, straight stripes and uh, um, checkerboards now how do we make this rotation invariant uh, understanding or the learning to the algorithm say consider a face which is turned like this will not be detected as good as the face like this so how do we make this rotation invariant uh, in learning so this is one of the area where uh, people are interested uh similarly uh, if we see for example if the camera takes a picture slightly um rotated uh, how easy is for the current methods to do that so uh, the answer is not very easy so unless there is a good data augmentation or the uh, like data that is uh, available even for the rotated uh, faces uh, in training data uh, but which is not the case usually the uh, other develop other thing that uh, few of the uh, like um, uh, students are working is on uh, understanding the uh, face recognition or automated attendance system and to develop it um, from scratch considering the registration process that is uh, very with very small samples how do we uh, uh, recognize a person in class without much disturbance to the uh, either in for each of the student in either in registration that is while collecting the data set or while uh, uh, class uh, uh, giving the attendance similarly the other problems are detecting the objects when they are uh, oriented and further problems that usually people are interested are segmenting uh, different vehicles and persons around uh are the uh, like uh, categories like trees background etc and this finds applications in autonomous driving and as well as automated parking lots etc uh, and there are uh, very good uh, state of the art methods developed for uh, for these things in recent years 
another area where this learning kind of methods has a prominent role is in uh, now um, object detection and tracking so where for example if you would like to track a, a person when it is moving or a red blood cells when they are moving so it is not very uh, easy to uniquely identify each red blood cell with different tag or also say for example this person is moving and we have a PT pan tilt and zoom camera and would like to track the person follow the person uh, so yeah there are some very challenging tasks where for example if you want, would like to track uh, a person who in a very uh, cluttered background it is not very easy to do that similarly uh, in blur uh, so there are several challenging problems around uh, each of these computer vision tasks are the uh, mm, that I discussed and there are very good machine learning developments that back up for these developments. So here again uh, if we give some kind of handwriting how do we understand and uh, re, like synthesize it or even uh, recognize the letters um, and uh, uh, now the uh, developments has gone even up to the synthesizing but the primary importance is to understand this and create the handwritten uh, mm, uh, words to a document conversion in different languages for example and also to evolve with uh, say understand when a person is speaking so usually what is the kind of uh, mm, the uh, discussion that goes on and how to give a similar answers or how to give a based on image how to give an answer based on the conversation how to give an like uh, uh, appropriate answer that is uh, like conversation machines that also are few areas where learning plays a great role so to summarize the machine learning applications that probably can be targeted after uh, like you now we discuss uh, the machine learning methods uh, or say fingerprint identification or any biometric uh, recognition and identification uh, character recognition and speech recognition and in robotics and autonomous vehicle uh, guidance and defect detection anomaly detection in different uh, mechanical or civil applications and uh, recognizing in computer vision either face expression gesture or objects etc either in videos or in images uh, and to understand the brain signals and uh, make a computer uh, human interface and also in different uh, remote sensing applications ranging from environmental modern monitoring uh, different classifications uh, understand motion like uh, detection of clouds or uh, different fluids uh, and uh, hyperspectral image classification and so on uh, they also find applications in biomedical areas where gene analysis uh, dna sequencing so finding a ap appropriate pattern or understanding the uh, sequence is can also be done quite uh, um, efficiently using learning based techniques nowadays and um, further uh, to um, like analyze easy automatically find where the uh, abnormality is <coughs> so segment uh, in segment, do segmentation in mri and uh, pet the uh, scan or fmri images uh, and identify uh, the blood count and uh, abnormal cells in microscopy data and it also has applications in finance um, uh, like understand predict even prediction can also be done through the methods like neural networks um, and uh, some of the machine learning al algorithms uh, do help in better visualization better analysis etc anomaly detection etc anomaly meaning the uh, any uh, change from the uh, conventional uh, uh, conventional process can be easily identified through learning based methods uh, thank you